Praise the Lord. My name is Shama Chitiba. I'm the host of the Rooted Tooth program. I welcome you to yet another episode of our program. Let's pray before we begin. Dear Father, we thank you for yet another day you've given us to listen to your word. Speak through me as I, I, I deliver this word. I pray that we learn something from this. It's in Jesus' name I pray and I believe. Amen. Welcome to the Rooted Truth program. Today we are going to talk about a topic, Glory Has Departed. Ichabod. We're going to read this story from the book of Samuel. And we're also reading the book of Judges. So, to give a context of what we're going to talk about today, um, Israel had a chief priest, his name was Eli, and Eli had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. These were the priests of Israel. However, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, the Bible says that uh, Hophni and Phinehas did not know the Lord. The Bible says that they were worthless men. Why does the Bible say that they were worthless men? If you read chapter 2, you will get the point why um, the Bible says that. So the custom was that when the priests, um, when the people brought a sacrifice before the Lord, it was a responsibility of the priests to offer it before the Lord. So let's say, you know, people brought a sacrifice of an animal before the Lord. The priests were supposed to boil that, that, that meat in, in a pot or a kettle. And while it was boiling, it was a responsibility. You know, the priests, you know, were taken care of by the people. God had said that, the priests would not um, would not get an inheritance. If you remember, the priests were from the tribe of Lev, Le, Levi. They were Levites. So they were not supposed to take a, a part of the inheritance. So the congregation was supposed to take care of them. So while the meat was boiling in a pot, the priest came with a fork and thrust in the pot. And whatever came out with the fork, that was the priest, you know, the, to go and feed his family and, you know, and, you know for nourishment. However, these two sons of, of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, uh, probably they didn't like boiled meat. Um, they told the people, you know, who came to sacrifice, you know, give us the meat raw. We, we want it raw. Maybe they wanted to eat it barbecue or roasted. I don't know. But this was against the law of God. God had said the sacrifice would be boiling. You thrust your fork in the kettle or the pot. Whatever comes is yours. But then they're telling the people, give me the meat raw. I want it raw. The people, you know, objected to this. They, they know they knew the law of the Lord. And they say, no, but the Lord said, you know, the meat has to be boiling. And they said, you know what? If you, you're you not going to give us the meat raw, we're going to take it by force. So the Bible says that they held the offering of the Lord in contempt. And this sin was great before the Lord. And, you know, God was against them from that day. So we're going to pick up from there and read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 4. We're going to read the whole chapter. 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 1 says, And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out to battle against the Philistines. They encamped at Ebenezer, and the Philistines encamped at Ephek. The Philistines drew up their line against Israel. And when the battle spread, Israel was defeated before the Philistines, who killed about four 4,000 men on the field of battle. When the people came to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has God defeated us today before the, the Philistines? Let us bring the ark of the Lord here to Shiloh, that it may come to us and save us from the power of the enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh and brought from there the ark of the covenant of the host of the, of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on a cherubim. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there, with the ark of, of the Lord. As soon as the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel gave a mighty shout, so that the earth resounded. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shouting, they said, What does this shouting in the camp of the Hebrews mean? And when they learned that the ark of the Lord had come in the camp, the Philistines were afraid, and they said, A God has come in the camp. And they said, Woe to us! For nothing like this has happened before. War to us. Who can deliver us from the power of these gods, of these mighty gods? These are the gods who struck the Egyptians when they sought with every sort of plague in the wilderness. Take courage. Be men of Philistines, lest we become slaves to the Hebrews as they have been to you. This is them encouraging themselves. Be men and fight. 
So the Philistines fought, and Israel was defeated. They fled, and every man to his home. And there was a great slaughter, for thirty thousand foot soldiers of Israel fell. And the ark of the Lord was captured, and the two sons of Eli and, and Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, died. So let's take a pause there. So there's this battle, and they are losing. Israel is losing. And, you know, the elders of, of, of the congregation, you know, ask, why are we losing? Why isn't God fighting for us? So they, you know, they come to a consensus. Let's bring the ark of the Lord to the covenant because the ark of the Lord is where the presence of the Lord was. The Lord dwelt in the ark. So, you know, they bring the ark of the Lord, but they still lose. And why am I bringing this up? Is that, you know, they wanted the power of the Lord without wanting his glory or his presence in their life remember the priests were responsible for the ark the priests were responsible for handling the ark the priests alone so when they bring the ark to the battle it's Hophni and, and Phinehas these are the two uh, young men you know who held the offering of the Lord in contempt remember their sin is still great before the Lord they haven't repented and they still lose you know we cannot have the power of God without his presence in our lives. We cannot, we cannot manipulate God. We cannot just want to have what God gives us, but not, you know, be his disciples. We cannot just want blessings from the Lord, but not listen, but not imitate him, but not be his followers, but not do what he wants us to do. This is exactly what these young men were doing. They are, they are holding the law of the Lord in contempt, you know, the, they don't care about what God said about the offering, but they need, they want his power. They want to win the battle. And God, you know, no wonder God was not with them, you know, even though the ark was there. In fact, the ark was captured. Let's continue to read in uh, from verse 12. It says, And the man of Benjamin ran from the battle line and came to Shiro the same day with his clothes torn and with dust on his head. They arrived. When he arrived, Eli was sitting in his seat on the road watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of the Lord. When a man came into the city and told the news, the city cried out. When Eli heard the sound of the outcry, he said, What is this uproar? Then a man hurried and came and told Eli. When Eli was now Eli was ninety eight years old, and his eyes were set so that he could not see well. And a man said to Eli, I am one, I am he who has come from the battle. I fled from the battle today. And he said, How did it go, my son? He who brought the news answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there has also been a great defeat among the people. Your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, they are dead, and the ark of the Lord has been captured. As soon as he mentioned the ark of the Lord, Eli fell backward from his seat, by the side of the gate, and his neck was broken, and he died. For the man was old and heavy. He had judged Israel for forty years. Now, his daughter-in-law, the wife of Phinehas, was pregnant, about to give birth. And when she heard the news that the ark of the Lord was captured, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed and gave birth. And her pains came, and and when her pains came upon her. And about the time of her, of her death, the woman attending her said, Do not be afraid, for you have born a son. But she did not answer or pay attention. And she named the son, she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory has departed from Israel. This is where we get the theme of the message today. Ichabod, the glory has departed. She, she continued and said, Because the ark of God has been captured, and because his father-in-law and her husband had died, and she said, The glory has departed from Israel, for the ark of God has been captured. So we see that this this uh, this lady, they don't tell us her name, but she is Phinehas' wife. She's Eli's uh, daughter-in-law. She kind of understands that the glory of the Lord has departed from Israel. This is something that Phinehas and, 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 and Hophni did not, did not understand. They did not understand that, you know, when, when you walk in sin, when you walk in sin consistently, because the Bible says 
that they used to do this as as a, as a practice you know um you know holding you know in contempt the law of the lord you know about offerings so this was a sin that they were living in that they were practicing that they were non repentant they should have understood that the god of israel had departed from them that his glory had departed from them his presence had departed from them but they did not understand this and they went ahead and brought the ark of the lord to the battle but she understood it when she is about to die because she's she's giving birth and she has been just given this a bad news of of her father-in-law dying and husband dying you can understand the distress that she's in while she's in her labor pains so she's going to die and you know she gives a name to her son and, and the name is Ichabod the name means the glory has departed she was giving you know the true representation of what was going on she understood that when the ark of the lord is taken by philistines imagine the ark of the lord where the presence of the lord was was only to be held by the by the priests in fact if you read the bible you'll find that anybody else who was in the priest or from the line of levi held you know the ark they were struck you know you go and read about about a man uza in another in another part of the bible it says 70 men were struck because you know they, they they didn't hold the ark of the lord well so this is where the presence of the lord was this is where the presence of the lord dwelt but now imagine that the philistines have captured the ark of the covenant that means god is god is not there the presence of the lord is not in that ark otherwise all those philistines who touched it would have died immediately but because god had departed from the ark god had departed for that time they could capture it and take it wherever they want this is a this is, a, this is like a, an encouragement or maybe a warning to us christians that we cannot seek the power of the lord without his glory in our lives without his presence we cannot just want to be healed we cannot just want to be uh, blessed all the time we cannot just want you know go to 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 show us the miraculous the all these things without us walking in his way we cannot manipulate god god cannot be manipulated by us you know we we cannot just do things so that god may 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 show up when we want him god says that we should abide in him christ tells us that abide in me whether things are going good for us or not we should walk in christ we should stay steadfast that is our responsibility as believers you know we shouldn't seek for the power of the lord the power of the lord is going to come wherever his presence is the power of the lord is going to come wherever his presence is you know if you don't have the presence of god in your life but you seek his power you're going to be shocked like this these you know the, the israelites that are in battle with the philistines yes the ark of the lord is here but god is not in the ark he is not there the, his glory is not there and you know this could happen to our lives you know where we were seeking the, you know the miraculous we 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 are seeking you know these big th- blessings and all but the presence of the lord is not in our lives and don't be surprised when he doesn't show up when you think he should and that may make you bitter or angry against god like, god where were you when i needed you where were you but are you in the presence of the lord is the lord present in your walk is the lord present in your life is the lord present in your life in everything you do if he's not don't be shocked that you know when you seek his power it's not there because the power of the lord dwells where his presence is that's the lesson we learned from the first case of hophni and uza hophni and finha sorry and then the story of israel the second case that we're going to to study is from the book of judges the book of judges chapter 16 verses 1 to 22 Here we're going to talk about Solomon. So Judges chapter 16 1 to 22. I'm going to start reading. So Solomon went to Gaza and there he saw a prostitute and went into her. And the Gazaites to- were told Solomon has come here and they surrounded the place and set an ambush for him all night at the gate of the city. They kept quiet all night saying, "Let us wait." until the light of the morning then we will kill him but Solomon lay until midnight 
And at midnight he arose and took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and pulled them up, bar and all. And he put them on his shoulders and carried them up to the top of the hill that is in front of Hebron. After this, he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, and her name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came up to her and said to her, Seduce him, and see where his great strength lies, and by what means he may overpower by what means we may overpower him, that that we may bind him to humble him, and we will each give you a hundred and one thousand and a hundred pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Solomon, Please tell me where your great strength lies, and how you might be bound that no one could subdue you. Well, someone said to her, If you bind me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. Then the lords of the Philistines brought, brought up to her seven strong bowstrings that had not been dried, and she bound him with them. With them. Now she had men lying in ambush in the inner chamber, and she said to him, the Philistines upon you, Samson, and he snapped the bowstrings as a string of flax. As a string of flax snaps when it touches the fire, so the secret of his strength was not known. Then Delilah said to Solomon, Behold, you have mocked me and told me lies. Please tell me how you might be bound. And she said, and he said to her, if you bind me with new ropes that have not been used, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. You know, let's take a pause there. We can see that uh, Samson is a gullible man. You know, these two times, you know, she's she's asking him, you know, hey, tell me how I can bind you. And every time she's like, oh, the Philistines are upon you. And Samson doesn't kind of try to think, wait a minute. Why is it that every time, you know, you bind me, the Philistines come out from nowhere. And, you know, that's, that's, you know, a side note. Another side note here, it says, you know, Samson knows that he's not like other men. Because he's, he's telling her, you know, like, oh, you know, the first one is, you know, tie me up with, with bow strings. And then I'll become, we can be like any other man. This is a man who already understands that he has the presence of the Lord in his life. And he's saying, but if you do this, then I'll be weak and be like any other man. Next time he's telling her, oh, you know, new ropes. If you tie me with new ropes, I'm going to be weak and be like any other man. Any other man without the presence of the Lord. 12. So Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them. And he said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. And the men lying in ambush were in the inner chamber. But he snapped the ropes off his arms with a thread, like a thread. Then Delilah said to Samson, until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me how you might be bound. And, she, and he said to her, If you weave the seven locks of, of, my, head, of my head with a web and fasten, and fasten it tight with a pin, then I shall be weak and be like any other man. So while he slept, Delilah took the seven locks of his head and wove them into a web. And she made them tight with a pin and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he woke up from his sleep and pulled away the pin and the loom and the web. And she said to him, How can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times, and you have not told me where your great strength lies. And when she pressed him hard, with her words day after day and urged him and urged him his soul was vexed to death <laughs> let's take a pause here we, we can see that she was persistent Delilah was persistent in urging Samson to tell her the source of his strength persistent persistent you know that that she day after day and the bible says that he became vexed you know he, he if he became vexed and like you know what I, let me just tell you. 17. And he told her all his heart and said to her, A razor has never come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God 
from my mother's womb. If my head is shaved, then my strength will leave me, and I shall be weak and be like other men. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up again, for he has told me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hands. She made him sleep on her knees, and she called a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his hair, of his head. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him. So this is where the you know the thesis of what we're talking about is gonna come out. Verse twenty. And she said to him, The Philistines upon you, Simon, the Samson, and he awoke from his sleep and and he said to himself, Now this is Samson to you know saying to himself, I will go out as at the other times and shake myself free. You know, he wakes up and says, No, it shall be it shall be like, you know, every day. I will just go up and shake myself free and, and you know they're gonna run away. Listen to this. Twenty. He says, But he did not know that the Lord had left him. But Samson did not know that the Lord had left him. You see, he he played with sin so much. You cannot hold fire close to your chest and you in, you know, you don't think it won't burn you. It will burn you. He had played with sin. He had played with fire three times. With the bowstrings, you know. First of all, what was he marrying? A woman who was not Israelite. Because remember, God had, had, had given him a law. Do not marry, you know, women from your the neighboring nations. But here he was already living in sin by marrying, you know, being with Delilah. And here he is four times being seduced by her and urged by her to give up the secret. You know, no razor had touched his head since he was a child. And, you know, that that, that was where the strength of the Lord was coming from for his life. But now, because she, he's been in, you know, he's, he's been playing with sin. He's been playing with sin, you know. In 20, he wakes up and says, you know what? It's going to be like other times. I'm going to stand up and shake myself, and it will be like other times. And the Bible says, but he did not know that the Lord had left him. The glory had departed. Ichabod. Verse 21. The Philistines seized him and gouged out his eyes and brought him out to Gaza and bound him with bronze shackles and he ground at the mill in the prison so we see a mighty man of god who you know god had brought up as a judge in israel to 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 judge and to defend israel we see him from you know killing you know his enemies the enemies of israel with you know the the, the jaws of a donkey and defending israel we see him now he's in the enemies um Male, male cities, you know, mailing, you know, for them, and he's, he doesn't have his eyes. Why? Because he did not realize as he was falling further and further in sin that the presence of the Lord can depart from him. The presence of the Lord had departed from Samson. And now he is out without God. But let's see. God is a faithful God. You know, God is gracious to us. You know, in Lamentations it says that uh, the mercy of the Lord, the grace of the Lord is renewed for us every morning. Great is the faithfulness of the Lord. We see that in verse 22, it says that, But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. So while, you know, he's working at the mills and the Philistines are mocking him, his hair continues to grow. So we see here that as his hair continues to grow, you know, Samson is still bound. You know, this is kind of showing that the presence of the Lord is coming back. Because remember, the Bible says that, you know, he was not supposed to shave off his head. And now that he's shaved, he's, he doesn't have the presence of the Lord in his life. The glory has departed, but the hair begins to grow again. Let's read from verse 28. 8 to 30 still judges chapter 16 verses 28 to 30 it says then solomon called out to the lord and said oh lord god please remember me 
And please strengthen me only this once. Oh God, that I may be avenged on the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson grasped the two middle pillars on which the house rested. And as he leaned, and he leaned his weight against them, and his right hand, and with his right hand on on one and on and his left on the other, Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed with all his strength, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people who were, with, who were in it. So the dead whom he killed at, the, at his death were more than those whom he had killed all his life. So we can see here that repentance followed with humility moved the heart of God to bring back his glory, to bring back his presence in Samson's life. This is kind of good news to us. That, you know, when you realize in your life that the presence of the Lord departed from you because, you know, you entertained sin so much, because you played with sin so much, it's not the end. With repentance, with humility, like Samson, the glory of the Lord can come back to your life. And your greater, you know, your, your latter, you know, work will be greater than, than you know, the, the, the earlier one. We can see that, you know, in his, in his, you know, on his death, he killed more people than he had ever killed all his life. So I know this message could, could, could be kind of harsh. Yes, the presence of the Lord can depart from us when we toy with sin. When, 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 when we stay in sin so long, he can depart from us. The presence can depart from us. We wake up one morning, we're like, it's going to be like any other day, and we do not know that his glory has departed from us. However, if we repent, the Bible says, if we repent of our sins, if we confess to the Lord, he is merciful and gracious to forgive us our sins. If we come to him in humility, Samson prays a prayer in 28, says, Oh Lord, please remember me. Please strengthen me only this once. Oh Lord, please remember me. Let this be a prayer for all of us Christians. Oh Lord, please remember me. I have fallen. Please remember me. Please give me strength. Again, like Samson prayed. We serve a Lord. We serve a God of mercy, of, of, of grace, who will receive us if we go to him with genuine hearts after after his presence departed from us. So this has been an encouragement. This has been kind of a, a caution to us Christians that, you know, we should not, we do not, you know, you know, the, I, I listened to another preacher who says that do not keep a long account with God. If you know you're falling short of the glory of God, if you know you're sinning, do not continue to live in that sin. Do not continue to entertain it. Because before you know it, the presence will be gone. And if you do and you fall, it's not the end. You know, I know I'm, I'm saying this, but it, you could be in the case of Phineas and, 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 and Hophni, and maybe that could be your end. But God is gracious. It could also be like Samson, where, you know, you go to God and you say, remember me again. Have mercy on me. With that, thank you for listening to this program. And remember, that the presence of the Lord can depart from your life. But also remember that he is merciful and gracious enough that if you call out to him to remember you, he can bring his presence to your life again. Thank you for watching. And let's meet again next time. Amen.